Hello, in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a guide into the use of ND filters in photography, what they do, when to use them, what effects they can create and so on. If you're thinking of buying or using ND filters to create long exposure effects, then this tutorial is for you. Hello, I'm Mark Newton from the School of Photography and you can find us at theschoolofphotography.com where we deliver the best in photography education. In this tutorial, I'm going to explain ND filters to you. I've also created a ND filter guide that you can download and keep. This guide will help you with working out exposure times and what ones to buy and I'll tell you how to get that at the end of this video. So firstly, what do ND filters do? Well, they help you create images like this, and this, and this. An ND filter acts like sunglasses would to your eyes. It blocks light coming into the lens, like sunglasses blocks light coming into your eyes. An ND stands for neutral density, which means it blocks the light in a neutral way without changing the color of the light. So why would you want to block light coming into your lens? Light is good, it's what makes the image. It makes sense to think that if you block light coming into your lens, you're just gonna make a dark, underexposed image. Well, when you block light coming into your lens, you are forced to expose the camera to light for a longer period of time. You need to open the shutter for longer to allow the correct amount of light to enter the camera. I want to demonstrate this to you using water flowing at different rates. Okay, so let's explain what's gonna happen here. I've got 500 milliliters of water in each jug. Uh, that's a pint, depending on where you are in the world. And water is now the correct amount of light that we need. Okay, so we need 500 milliliters of light. I've got here a funnel with a nice big hole like that. And I've got over here a funnel with a nice small hole like that. And this one here is representing the camera that's got the ND filter on it. So it's gonna let the light in slower. So here we go. Let's pour the light in. And as you can see, the camera without the ND filter, the light's just poured through. With an ND filter on, it's letting in the light very, very slowly. Very slowly. <laughs> and that's basically what an ND filter is doing. It's letting the light through very slowly into your camera. Okay, let's go and look at some pictures. Okay, so let's look at the effect an ND filter can have on an image. So here's a normal picture with no filter, taken using a tripod at 1 30th of a second. You can see the ripples in the water and the clouds look clear. Everything has been frozen for that fraction of a second. And here is a shot taken just after that one using a 10 stop ND filter. And here is a 10 stop ND filter. Um, you can, well, you can hardly see through it. If I hold it up to my eye or hold it up to anything, you can hardly see through it. It's letting in um, very little light. So that's what a 10, 10 stop ND filter looks like. And using it in this image, it has allowed me to increase the exposure time to 30 seconds. So I've still exposed the camera to the same amount of light, but this one has been exposed over a longer period of time. And when you do that, everything that's still stays still, i.e. the tree and the mountains, and everything that moves blurs or blends in together. This shot has also been adjusted in Lightroom to pump up the colors and contrast. There's a whole tutorial on how I, how I adjust images in Lightroom, and I'll put that link up here so you can see that if you wish. Okay, so let's look at them both together. The one on the left shot at 1 30th of a second, 
The one on the right shot at 30 seconds with, an N, with a 10 stop ND filter on. Again, they have both been exposed to exactly the same amount of light, but when you add the ND filter, you are able to allow that light to enter slowly, which allows moving things to blur, such as the clouds, and it also allows things to blend in, such as the ripples in the water. Also note that it's only the shutter speed that has changed. The aperture and the ISO has stayed the same. And you have to do this when you're doing these kinds of shots, and you also have to work in fully manual mode. I'll cover that in much more detail in my other tutorial, how to use ND filters, and I'll put a link up to that when it is ready. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of ND filters that you can get because they come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Firstly, you've got these ones here. These are the basic ones. I think they're very good value for money and they do the job really well for what they cost. This costs about 10 pounds and all you do is you screw it to the front of your lens and you've got an ND filter on it. It's as simple as that. You have to get the right filter for the right size of your lens. Now I would recommend that you get one that fits your standard zoom lens. If you're just starting and you just want to practice, you know your standard zoom lens that you get with your kit when you buy your DSLR? Look on the front of that lens, it will give you, and for, this, in, for instance in this case it says 58mm, it will give you the size of the circumference of the lens and the filter size that you need. You go on the internet, you type it in, there's loads of different brands, it doesn't really matter, they are, you know, they are cheap, but they do the job. And you can buy one and you can screw it straight onto the front of your lens and you're away. And that is the circular type. Then, if you wanna make more of a commitment to this type of photography, what you wanna do is get what's called a filter holder system. And here's one here. Now you can get lots of different brands of these and they do vary in price slightly but I'm, I'm not here to say which one is better or worse because they're all pretty good but you can get a Lee filter system, you can get one called Nissi, get one called High Tech, and you can get one called Kukin as well. Kukin are probably the more budget ones out of all of them so again if you're, if you're just starting maybe you want to start off with that one and try getting some second hand stuff as well and you know maybe that's quite good to get you started. But basically the filter system works a little bit different because you can get your filters, I'm just going to take that out for a minute, and here you've got a 10 stop ND filter, a 10 stop ND filter, and what you do is you slot it into your filter system, like that, and then you're away and you're ready to take a picture. Now the only thing to note here is that you need to get what's called, I'll just take that off, an adapter ring, which is this thing here, and that needs to be the correct size for your lens. Again, it's the filter size that you're looking for. This one is an 82 mil one. You screw that on, your filter system goes on it, and you're away. Another good thing about using a filter system is that you can use graduated ND filters like these. So here I've got hard grads, and here I've got a soft grad, and what you can see is this line in the middle here is a lot harder than this line in the middle here, which is a soft grad. So the hard grads, like this one here, they're for horizon lines, basically, the C, or if you've got a nice horizon line that's very sharp, then you use a hard grad and it works really well. If you've got like trees or, I don't know, buildings or something like that, then you might want a soft grad. And graduated filters are really simply there to darken the sky, to balance out your exposures. And you need to use a filter system for one of them. So you can't get the screw-on grads. You're going to have to use a filter system. And this is the reason why, because you slot them in and you look through your viewfinder and you slot them in and when you're outside, and I'll show you this in the other tutorials when we're, when we're out using them, and you push them down and you can see how the graduated filter is blocking the light from the sky. That's what you normally use them for. So grad filters for only for filter holder systems.
So let's look at an example of using a hard grad ND filter. The one on the left is a normal picture shot using what the camera thought was the correct exposure. So the camera has thought to itself that this is the correct exposure. It's looked at the sky, it's looked at the ground, and it's given you a kind of in-between. But what you can actually see is it's blown out the sky. The ground looks okay, it's, it's quite well, well exposed, but the sky certainly isn't. And that's because the sky on this particular day was really bright. And when we look at the one on the right, this one's got a two-stop hard grad ND filter on. And this has darkened the sky by two stops to give you a much more balanced exposure. Then, when you use a 10-stop ND filter together with the ND grad and add some Lightroom and Photoshop trickery to it, you can get a shot like this. So now let's talk about different strengths of ND filters and how you work out exposure times when using them. I'm gonna put all of this on your free ND filters guide, which you can download at the end of this video. So don't worry about it, you can always refer to that. But basically, ND filters are created in stops. And a stop in photography is either halving or doubling the amount of light, making the picture one stop darker or one stop lighter. In the case of ND filters, you are always halving or reducing the amount of light. So a one-stop ND filter will be stopping the light by 50% or half. A 10-stop ND filter is stopping the light by 10 halves in a row. Now you have to do it sequentially. It's really important. You can't just go times 10. So let's look at a simple scenario. Remember, when you're doing long exposure shots, it's only the shutter speed you want to be changing. If you have a two second exposure without a filter, then you put a one stop ND filter on, you have effectively half the amount of light coming into the camera. So to counterbalance this, you have to increase the amount of time you let light coming into the camera. In this case, by doubling it. So here I've created a little graph for you. And what you can see is you are halving the amount of light with the filter, so you have to double the amount of light with the shutter speed. A two second exposure doubles into a four second exposure. You are letting in the same amount of light but over a longer period of time. And that's the basic principle of ND filters. They stop light coming into your camera, which forces you to compensate by letting in light over a longer period of time. Let's look at this in a table, which I've included in your ND filter guide. On this graph, you can see that I've put the exposure time as one second there throughout. So if we go to the first one, one second, you put a one stop ND filter on, it doubles the time to two seconds. If you have a one second exposure time normally, and you put a two stop ND filter on it, it doubles it twice. So it goes to two and to four. And it keeps going down like that. So it's not as simple as just times in it by 10 or whatever it is. You have to double and double and double again in a sequential um, way. Just to confuse you more, different manufacturers will advertise different numbers for stops. For instance, instead of just saying a two stop ND filter, they might say it has an optical density of 0.6 or an ND factor of four. Why they do this is beyond me, there's no need for it in my opinion, but they do. And just to help you out, I've made another table on that guide which gives you all of these numbers with the same meaning. So let's just have a quick look at that so I can go through it for you. Okay, so here's the graph that I've done for you and let's go to ND filter stops two. And if you go across there, you can see that it has an optical density of 0.6 or an ND factor of four. Now that's there for a lot of different technical reasons that you don't really need to worry about. But my best advice to you is to just stick to the stops. How many stops does the end filter have? Now let's talk about what stop filter to use for what type of shot. 
Don't forget there's also a tutorial on how to use ND filters on this channel where I'll be out in the field showing you how to use them in situ. I'll definitely put a link up that to that when it's done. But in general, for these types of long exposure shots with clear water and blurred clouds, you will want a 10 stop or a 6 stop ND filter. And this is because you will want your exposure time to be at least 30 seconds and up to four minutes. The higher stop filters will enable you to get those long exposures. For shots like this, you might want a two stop filter as this is shot at 1 15th of a second. Now I did this shot as a panning shot of obviously of mountain bikers and it was in the middle of the day with really bright sunshine. So even at 1 15th of a second, I was at ISO 100, it was still blowing out the exposure. So I just had to stop the light coming into the lens a little bit. So this shot was taken with just a two stop ND filter on it, which allowed me to just increase that shutter speed just a bit to get the shot. Now let's talk about some of the equipment you will need. A good sturdy tripod is a must. Don't even bother taking out them small flimsy lightweight ones, they just won't work. You're gonna need a bit of weight because it's gonna need to hold your camera firmly to the ground for a long period of time. I have a whole tutorial on tripods on this channel, I'll put a link to that so you can go and see that if you want to. You will also need to buy a cable release or a remote trigger. Here's a remote trigger and here's a cable release. And you're gonna need them because you're gonna to need to shoot on a setting called bulb. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cover that in the using ND filters when we're out in the field. But these, uh, you, this is a really cheap one I got off of um, off the internet and it go, works with my 5D. And these are remote ones and they do the same thing. So you're gonna need a cable release or a remote trigger as well. Then of course you need some ND filters. So my recommendation, if you're just starting with this technique, is to get the cheaper ones that screw on the front of your lens, these ones. They're really good, you'll have a load of fun with them. They're cheap, they're about 10 pound each. Um, and I would recommend that you get, to start you off, you get a six stop one and a 10 stop one. Now you should avoid getting those variable ND filters. They're the types of ones that they screw onto your front of your lens and they've got another screw thing on the front and you twist them and it gets lighter and darker. They seem like a really good buy, but they're not. They're quite hard to judge the exposure times on them, even if they've got the numbers round the side. And the other thing that I don't like about them is when you turn them to their strongest setting, let's just say if you had an eight stop one, eight stops, you tend to get these lines running through your shot and it's, they seem like a good idea, you know, like one filter fits all, but they're not. And I would, I would recommend getting the straight fixed screw on ones, or if you've got more money and this is something that you want to invest in and practice with more in the future, then get yourself a filter holder system with these really nice um, glass and resin ones like this. My advice on when to use them is this. If you want that glass looking effect in the water, you need the water to be fairly still and calm. Just slight ripples, it's what's gonna be perfect. Big crashing waves up against rocks, it, it just won't work. It won't give you that smooth glass effect. Also, have a few clouds in the sky. This will give the shot some texture. A fully overcast day will just give you a, a, just a plain gray sky. And although clear skies can look good and lovely clear sky, a bit of clouds gives you a bit of texture in the, in the sky. So wait for a bit of clouds if you can. Also try and catch the sunrise or the sunset. If you're trying to shoot in midday, the light will be too white and it might also be too bright. Even, if, even with a 10 stop filter on, you still might not get them 30 seconds exposures which is what you want. And there you go, ND filters explained. Don't forget to check out the how to use the ND filters tutorial, where I'll be out in the field using them. That'll be up when it's ready, so if, it's, if, you've, if the link's not there yet, then it will be there soon, so just hang around. 
You can also download the free guide to ND filters via the link in the description of this video. I hoped you've liked this. If you did, click the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. We'd also love for you to join our photography learning community on social media. So please make sure you follow us on your preferred site. Thanks for watching and remember, learn more at the School of Photography.